let's straight away welcome our big news maker on the show tonight dr shashi tarur lok sabha mp dr tarur thank you so much and welcome sir welcome uh, to india head in its all new avatar very nice to see you and see you in your new incarnation your new avatar too yes sir uh, dr tarur how how very ironic uh, dr tarur that uh, you know over the, over these last uh, two decades i have managed to well get into at least two reincarnations from ndtv i moved to cnn ibn from cnn ibn it became cnn news 18 and from cnn news 18 i have now come here uh, to india head trying well, to do some more meaningful stuff the congress mp but from tiruvannamalai is there a bit of an irony here sir that when i look at the grand old political party <laughs> yeah i and i wish you well i wish you well sir i wish you well i'm i'm certain that uh, that that you know you will continue to represent the people of tiruvannamalai well But Dr. Tharoor, my point was country's grand old political party, sir. Firstly, tell me, what do you make out? Where is the Congress party today, sir? You know, Sonia Gandhi spends a year as interim president. Sachin Pilot, I don't know where he went, and I don't know what he's come back to. But just tell me, in your words, where is the Congress party today? Oh, I think it's uh, very clearly the principal opposition to the BJP government in the centre. Uh, it is also, of course, the ruling party in four or five states and uh, in coalitions and a couple of others, and it's also the principal opposition party in other states. So the Congress Party is the one other party in the country with a national footprint, with a completely uh, compelling national vision and narrative, and with the strength, I believe, to offer a credible alternative to the BJP at the next general elections. The question is, of course. it needs to revitalize and re-energize its party rank and file its hmm. its, uh, its support base in order to manifest itself as a convincing uh government of tomorrow as it used to be a convincing government in the past and i think to get there i would accept your question as to whether we can continue with an interim arrangement at the leadership of the party uh my answer along with yours is that no i think we ideally would like to see the party uh taking on a full time full term president hmm. why why dr tharoor you know any uh, a- any corporate company any corporate house any business for that matter anyone who's trying to indulge in any kind of an enterprise or ultimately is held to some kind of an accountability they can always be transitions for how long will the grand old political party continue to be stuck only and only with that one single debate if not a member of gandhi family then who let me put it this way why can't shashi tharoor be the president of the congress party because the party workers would rather have rahul gandhi let's be very honest i mean i'm not uh, an un- unnecessarily unrealistic or uh, immodest person i think that uh, rahul gandhi was the last incumbent president and if tomorrow he decides to withdraw his resignation I honestly think that the vast majority of the party workers would welcome that so that would be the end of the debate. The only debate comes up if he doesn't want to withdraw he says he'd prefer not to be president. Hmm. Then can we carry on indefinitely with an interim arrangement or should we now take formal steps to actually go through a process or a system that will give us a full-time president? And it seems to me and I may be a uh uh the only voice that's hmm. willing to say this out loud hmm. i think that a process will actually give legitimacy and credibility to whoever comes after the gandhi family leadership and therefore if that is indeed the wish uh, of rahul gandhi i think uh, we should start moving in that direction rather than allow all of you in the media to look at this continuing hiatus and say oh this party is adrift and rudderless when it, the time has come for us to say as rahul gandhi has been saying this bjp emperor has no clothes and it's time for us to expose the failures and shortcomings of this government no uh, i uh, th- that's my that's my point that's my point dr thoru that's that that was our next question over the years uh, one has had the pleasure of interviewing you on so many occasions and you've always been very candid with us in your interactions what beats me sir what beats me is that at a time when you could have questioned the bjp say on whether there was a chinese transgression when you could have questioned them has the strategy of this lockdown versus 2 million covid cases what's the strategy what's happening on the economy front look at where your party is stuck 
you are only celebrating what you are somehow managing to hold on to. Now look at Sachin Pilot. Don't you think that the Sachin Pilot crisis is a great example of what happens when you are a party which is leadership less and rudderless? No, I, I would say frankly, Bhupin, that you guys are uh, generalizing too much from one or two individual cases which have much more to do with the specific circumstances of their political existence and their states. Uh, I honestly don't think there is a, a pandemic of political disenchantment with the Congress uh, as the media mm. is portraying. And when you raise the specific questions we should be raising. But a crisis Rahul of leadership Gandhi has been doing the reason why those Rahul circumstances exist in Thing those states, Rahul. Dr. Tharoor, the reason why those circumstances exist. I'm saying, but the reason, the reason, the reasons are why those why those circumstances exist in those states, Dr. Tharoor, is because you don't have a leader. That's that's what I'm alluding to. You have opportunities to take on the BJP, but you're missing out on all those opportunities because you don't have a leader. So that we plays out in the form of such in We have a leadership that, that has just solved question? the problem. And the problem that you're pointing to has been resolved by the existing high command of the Congress party. So how can you say there is no leadership? The leadership has stepped in and solved it. Hmm. So I would say that that's not a fair comparison at all. In fact, I would go farther and say that if you look at what specifically really? has been raised, uh, who else in the opposition hmm has been raising the issues that Rahul Gandhi and some of us in the Congress party have been raising about the government's misleading statements on the LAC with the Chinese uh, essentially in possession mm. of territory that they didn't have before June of 2020. Uh, who has been raising the questions of the migrant workers? We were the first and the loudest and the most consistent mm. to do so. Mm. Who has been raising the question of the mismanagement of the COVID pandemic? Congress and Congress alone. Hmm. Who has been raising the question of the collapsing economy, uh, the flattening of the wrong curve, as uh, hmm. as Rah Rajiv Bajaj said in an interview with Rahul Gandhi? And finally, who has been raising the question of the record sky-high unemployment in this country? Again, the Congress. Hmm. The five big issues confronting the nation today, which are the direct result hmm. of the failure of the BJP government, have been raised by the Congress party and its leadership, and frankly, by no one else. And therefore, I would say to you that your question is misconceived because the answer is that we are the only party that is doing exactly what you say a good opposition should be doing. Therefore, that means we are a good opposition. But, 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 my, but my fear is just this. But my fear is just this, sir, that what you think you know, is a process of discharging of responsibilities could well be literally getting through the motions, frankly. Uh, can you can you say this with commitment, for instance, Dr. Tharoor, that what this so-called solution which has been worked out, and imagine a three-member committee, some kind of a special investigation team being set up to hold on to a government of a particular political party. What does this tell you about your party? Look, no one is saying that what happened was a pleasant thing. Uh, in many ways, the Congress uh, was very, very disturbed by this entire episode and, 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 and sure there would be hmm. an internal reckoning. But at the same time, the fact that the crisis was diffused and that a solution was found hmm. uh, to restore the status quo ante is also a way of reminding us that in the LAC in Galwan Valley and Pangong So Lake, hmm. no one has restored the status quo ante. So at least if Modi can take India's territory back to where it was in May of 2020, then you no, can my, my. Uh, talk about valid comparisons <clears throat> about effective opposition. But my, my, my question my question was specifically in the context of what's happened in Rajasthan. I just want to know whether this truce which has been worked out, Dr. Thurur, is this truce here to stay? Is this truce here to stay or is this no one knows within the Congress party kind of a story which is unfolding? Look, no one anticipated what happened. Therefore, no one can, you know, uh, I think, I think you know, predict the future of, of anything that happens. But the truth is that within Rajasthan, we have a government. There were issues within that government which the frustrations boiled over. They have now been allowed to cool mm. down again and a solution will be found so that we can avoid mm. the same frustrations arising in future. 
that's really the best I think I can say. Remember, Bhupen, I'm not a party spokesman. You ask me here as a Congress MP, hmm. uh, and speaking very much in my own right, I'm sure that a party spokesman will give you uh, uh, the right answer from the on the party's behalf. Of course, behalf. yes. As somebody who's concerned you about, know, because I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, no, 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 no. But Dr. Tharoor, you're the, you're the, you're the right person. That's the key. That's the key. That's the key. That's the key. So you know, you yourself have been through rather tough times in the past, Dr. Tharoor. But I've always seen that you know you you've discharged your responsibilities as a loyal Congress soldier. You've spoken your mind out also. Therefore, I just want to know as a loyal Congress soldier, you may hope that this truce will stay, but are you absolutely confident? And the reason why I ask is, again, because you are a party which you claim has a leadership, but according to me has no leader. What is this party model which has a leadership but no leader, Dr. Tharoor? Now, at the moment, uh, very much so. We have Sonia Gandhi as the interim president. So she is the leader and she's been leader 20 years before, so no one is challenging her leadership or her, her authority as a leader at all. As for Rahul Gandhi, he was president for uh, under two years, admittedly, uh, and he chose to quit. But if he were to, uh, if he were to, to, shall we say, withdraw that hmm. resignation, um, he has a five-year term, which the CWC could well say, listen, we never accepted your resignation, or we uh, acquiesced hmm. in it very reluctantly. Now that you've withdrawn it, please You think he's the best person? And carry on where you left off. You think you but, think he's the best but, person? Let me let me say I think the party. You think workers, he's the best person to be the Congress president, sir? You think he remains look, I, the best bet? I, I think he's shown tremendous qualities. He's been very effective and vigorous and outspoken during the uh, hmm. coronavirus pandemic and the lockdowns. But let me add that if he doesn't want the job, which is his prerogative, that no one should oblige the party and the interim president to carry on indefinitely. There should be hmm. steps taken to revive the party organization. And that does mean starting a process to have a president, starting a process, I believe, and I've advocated this before, to elect the elected members of the Congress Working Committee. As you know, the Congress Working Committee has three categories of people attending, the elected members, the appointed members, and the permanent invitees. But the truth is that all three have been essentially appointed hmm. so far uh, for the last couple of decades by the party leadership. Mm. And therefore, it might be a good rejuvenation injection oh. of fresh blood and fresh air right. to elect the elected members. Mm. And then, of course, you have the um, you have the uh, DCCs, PCCs. In fact, you can go right down to the blocks okay. and mandals, which could all do with a shot of new energy uh, and, and perhaps some new faces. So uh, uh, the BJP, for mm. example, recently announced that um, all their district leaders would have to be okay. under 50 which was a rather dramatic step to take because obviously I know from my own experience that every mm. party has district leadership mm. that in many cases uh, is well past that, that age group. Now, I'm not suggesting that should be the model, but it shows that there are ways of approaching the issue of rejuvenation that we could take up. So there's a whole lot, you know, you don't only focus on the president of the party or the leader of the party, you focus on the overall health of the party organization its grassroots hmm. presence in every district, ideally in every mohalla, as the Congress used to have, and then have the capacity to interact with the general public. Hmm. That, to my mind, is hmm. what we used to be very good at. And I would like to think that uh, that if we can do this well, uh, we would have a rejuvenated, re-energized Congress uh, party yeah. to lead the fight I, against the I think the you, you, you're laying down a very good roadmap. I think you're laying down a very good roadmap for, for what the Congress should do in future. And I hope, I hope your party leadership would be listening to your comments. But let me let me draw attention, Dr. Tharoor, to to what to what I believe really is missing in Indian political discourse. And one of the reasons mm. why I have uh, I have taken over this new challenge in my life is that I find that there is too much of discourse only and only around North Indian states. You know, I come from UP, and uh, and in my in my previous organization, we all have hyperventilated about what's going on with the yogi or what's going on with the Nitish Kumar. And sometimes I feel that in national media, you know, so-called national media, we don't often talk about issues coming from southern parts of uh, of the country. So tonight, my lead story is, by the way, not uh, uh, not what's going on in in Rajasthan, but I'm looking at what's happening in Bhadrachalam, for instance. You know, why is it that there is so much of obsession about Ayodhya, but not about uh, not about a region which many people in India perhaps are not even aware of? So, Dr. Tharoor, I want to ask you, in terms of what happened with the DMK MP, and this, you know, I, 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 my phone lines were open, and I have spoken to a lot of viewers from Kerala to Chennai to Bengaluru, 
And I got this sense as, 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 uh, as the deputy editor of the Hindu, uh, Lakshman put it up, uh, you know, in a conversation that he said that there is a sense of hurt Tamilian pride when it comes to dealing with North India, specifically with Hindi. Do you buy this criticism, Dr. Tharoor, that there is an inherent bias which exists Absolutely. amongst Absolutely. the North Indians when it comes to looking at our friends from these five southern states? Absolutely. And there are example after example available, particularly during the Modi government. See, don't forget, Bhupen, that the RSS slogan for a long time was Hindi, Hindutva, Hindustan. Uh, the BJP had built its, its traction uh, <laughs> advocating that kind of slogan. Uh, as recently as February, a BJP MP stood up in the Lok Sabha in my presence and said that mm. Hindi should be made the Rashtra Bhasha and everybody should have mm. to speak it. Uh, the Tamils got up to protest and the House was adjourned. Mm. But I mean, that's the, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, anxiety that Southerners mm. feel because we thought this issue had been settled after the language riots of the early 1960s. And in the mid-60s, a decision was made to create a three-language formula the state language, English mm. as the link language, or the language of, of communication and governance, and then a third, third, third language, which we understood in, the, in, in very many states would be Hindi, but could also be others. For example, in the Hindi-speaking states, it was explicitly said they should teach a southern language. Uh, but of course, they don't. I'm unaware of a single Hindi state that truly upholds the three-language uh, mm. policy, the three-language formula. And any Hindi-speaking state that has a third language, it's usually only Sanskrit and not any southern language. Whereas in the south, many southern states, with possibly the sole exception of hmm. Tamil Nadu, have proved willing so to at least, study Hindi, yeah. at least study Hindi as a second. No, in Kerala, we have a very active hmm. Hindi prachar sabha. And uh, very many Kerala politicians do learn Hindi as at least a second or a third language. But in Tamil Nadu, there is a, a strong, passionate objection to the idea of Hindi. It's partially because Malayalam is a I more see, Dr. Tharu, that you tweet away. No, I'm just saying. I see, I see Dr. Tharu, you tweet. You know, you, you've started, uh, both you, by the way, and Mr. Chidamram have started tweeting away in Hindi as well. Right. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm saying in, uh, as far as, you know, if the question was Hindi imposition, because the sense I get is that there is this fear that Hindi is being imposed. I want to know if you buy this. If, you, if this is a valid valid apprehension which is being expressed by... I'll tell you what the apprehension comes from. It comes from things like this government uh, suddenly deciding to name national projects only in Hindi terms. So you have a Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Under Vajpayee's hmm. government, it was a total sanitation program. You have a, a Fasal Bhima Yojana. Pradhan Mantri, Fasal Bhima Yojana. Pradhan Mantri is common in every language. But nobody hmm. in the South knows what a Fasal Bhima Yojana is. Hmm. That's all Hindi. Uh, you have... Uh, even Teacher's Day is now only referred to as Guru Purnima. The Prime Minister and the government do everything in mm. Hindi. Milestones on national highways have their lettering in Hindi. Announcements mm. at the airport of flights are in Hindi. Somebody was saying that mm. in the Koyu Kod air crash, the mm. air hostess and the pilot announced in Hindi that people should wear their seat belts. And apparently many passengers couldn't understand it. So many were not wearing the seat belts when the plane crashed. Uh, you have example mm. after example of attempts mm. insidiously to make Hindi not the Raj Bhasha, which is the language of a language of government alongside English, but a Rashtra Bhasha. And it cannot be the sole Rashtra Bhasha because every language recognized in the hmm. constitution of India hmm. is a Rashtra Bhasha. Tamil and Malayalam are also Rashtra Bhashas along with Hindi. But the Hindi Wallas don't appreciate this. They actually mistakenly hmm. think that Hindi is the sole national language. Hmm. And that becomes a real problem. Uh, undoubtedly, the majority of our voters now are Hindi mother tongue mm. people. But that is all the more reason why they should be attentive to the fears and concerns of the minority. If all of Indian politics and governance becomes dominated by a Hindi, which Shukla and Singh okay. and Chaube have been hearing from their mother's Godi, but Subramanyam and Reddy and Menon suddenly have to find that they have uh, completely at a disadvantage in competition for everything and then for access to everything and for effectiveness in every kind of action. You can imagine how dangerously divisive it can be for the country. This is the real issue. And I think that uh, our, hmm. our good uh, friends in the North should realize imposition, okay. compulsion, Final question, uh, disadvantage will never work. But, yeah. you know, ironically, things like Bollywood and so on were spreading Hindi much more than before. All right. Final question then uh, to you, Dr. Tharoor, specifically in this context. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I've been speaking to Malayalam authors who are all telling me that they've been writing for Hindi television serials and movies, etc. I mean, look at A.R. Rahman, he's a great example. Or Kamala Hassan, you know, he went on to sort of transcend the barrier between the North and the South. But that's my final question before I let you go, Dr. Tharoor. This, this initiative that I have undertaken, do you think it's a, do you, a, many people, many of our viewers have been telling me that why should I be looking at it to, you know, to spread the divide? I'm not trying to spread the divide, but when I say this clearly, that there is this bias which exists, the voice of our friends from southern states needs to be taken far more seriously in parliament and in northern exactly. parts of the country. Is that, a, is that a void which can be filled, according to you, Dr. Totally, totally. I mean, there's no question in my mind that it's very important to do that. When Kanimoji made her complaint, immediately P. Chidambaram said the same thing had happened to him, and others have been saying this. I think that people have to respect the fact that uh, a Tamil is as proud of her mother tongue as uh, as you may be proud of yours and that if our meeting ground uh, is one that enables us to speak in a common language we first have to respectfully ascertain what that is now you may find a south indian who's comfortable in chatting with you in hindi but you you may want to start off in english if you have it to see that whether that might be easier for them um and mm. as far as I'm concerned, you know, we cannot get into a situation mm. where the North, because of its numerical uh, majority, and it's not a big majority, just over half of the population of India, assumes that it has a God-given right to impose its preferences on the rest of the country. Because mm. unity of the country is far more important than the uniformity that the Hindi Walas, okay. the Hindi chauvinists wish to promote. Let us privilege unity rather than division rather than uniformity well that's the reason why that's the reason why this new avatar and this new experiment with india head dr Thurun, i hope that i'll continue to get your support in our mission always thank you so good much good luck Bupen. thank you so good much talking to you